I don't know how to refresh. Is it on you or on me? Well, it's my account looking at your wall. Okay. So it will. I'll find it. <clears throat> Very confusing. That's better than superstition. Don't know how to refresh. Is it on you or on me? Mm hmm. Maybe that did it. There it is. Down. There we go. That's Mary. Hi, Mary. Hello. Maybe it'll work tonight. How's everyone's week going? Well, I hope. We do look dark from here down. Yeah. Why is that? Let me see if I can just allow you tell me if it looks better or worse. Dark. Hang on, it's delayed. Go up, 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 up. Doesn't look any different. I don't know if you're going up or not. Hello, Cheryl and Robert. That's good. Just stop right there. I don't think it changed anything, but. How are y'all? <coughs> hey, Carol. Hey, Miss Mary. What do you think? We okay? Uh, surely. It's all about the sound anyway and not about not about how we look. Because it's a Bible study. Carol said, praise the Lord. Closed on my aunt niece's <clears throat> house today. It's officially mine. Praise the yeah, Lord. Praise Yay. God. That's been a long time coming. Hello, Kathy. Hello, hello. How was the dog show? I watched a little snippet on YouTube and a uh, bloodhound one, which I just found fascinating. Every, it was a beautiful bloodhound. Every dog has its day, right? Couldn't help You myself. are so cute. Oh, she won an award of merit. Praise the Lord. Double praise reports Golf tonight. Clap. Carol got her house, and um, Kathy won at the Westminster Dog Show. Yay, I'll look. I've been gone all day, Kathy, so I hadn't had much time online. It's so good to see everybody. Okay, I'll stop well, chit-chatting. Well, um, give everybody another minute maybe to come in. 7.03, and we will open in prayer. And we hope every, hope the broadcast does good and the sound holds up. The video can stop as long as the sound holds up. Yes. We've actually looked into podcasts and doing that. I don't know how. Because, you know, I've got a face that's just made for radio. So we <laughs> thought about maybe a podcast. I like looking at your face. I know what you're married to, but you have to. Oh, you silly. Okay, we're going to open in prayer. <clears throat> hey, Roberta. Did I say hey to Roberta? No, you didn't. <clears throat> hey, Roberta. Okay. Okay, Father, we come before you this evening. We ask for a blessing on our Bible study that you would uh, help us to understand what your spirit says to the church. And we ask, Lord, that you would give us understanding into this story in Genesis. And we ask, Father, that you would lead us through the Holy Spirit and uh, just help us all to, to grow in this tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I'm excited about this one. Well, it's, this one might be shorter because it's a concise, even though it's a chapter and 20 something verses, it's a concise story. Doesn't vary, not many rabbit trails, although. We can, can come see, up with some rabbit trails. Well, we seem to, don't we? We do. Uh, we're in Genesis 28, if you'll find that. Genesis 28. Uh, and I really don't have any other passages to look at tonight. So Genesis 28. And this one might not go an hour unless we can really put in a lot of questions and conversation. I like conversation. I knew that about you. I know you did. And they like conversation, yes. don't y'all? You enjoy the conversation yeah. we have with you. Right. And please comment, ask questions, and it would be good. Hi, Letitia, how are you? It would be good if you ask questions that I don't know because it prompts me to go study it, you know? Yes. 
So, Are you going to talk tonight about what you messaged me about today? Or no. is that on something else? Uh, I don't know. Because I was very No, intrigued. that's actually in the next chapter. Oh, you're studying ahead. I try to. I try to. Okay, Genesis 28. You want to be my beautiful assistant tonight? I will. Okay. What do you want me to read? If you would read <laughs> verses 1 through 5, Genesis 28, 1 through 5. And I said, <clears throat> called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Paddan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy, father, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob and he went to Paddan Aram unto Laban son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's, and Esau's mother. Okay. Um, bringing everybody up to date, if you've missed the last study or have not been following us, either way, <clears throat> Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob. In the last chapter, two chapters ago, we read, um, actually it was last chapter, we read that Jacob deceived his father to believe that he was the oldest brother. They were twins, but one was still technically the oldest. Uh, we, you, we read how he went in and deceived him by bringing meat first and by the animal skins on his hands and Esau's clothing, so he smelled like him. He did everything except sound like him. And even among... Um, brothers and sisters, there is a difference in sound of the voice. Absolutely. Um, these were obviously not identical twins. You know, there's identical twins that look alike and sometimes their voices are much the same. Mm -hmm. These were not. They were different looking, different, obviously different acting, but Isaac liked Esau and Rebecca liked Jacob. Now, mm -hmm. here we find that in the, in the last passage of 27, Esau has said, whether he said it under his voice or somehow the somebody in the house heard and they went to Jacob and let him know that your brother's going to kill you as soon as your father's dead. <coughs> and so Rebecca told him to flee and to go to her brothers. Mm -hmm. Here in chapter 28, Isaac calls him in and gives him the blessing once again. I think it's interesting that he could have said, you know what, son, you you deceived me. I didn't mean to give you that blessing. I'm not blessing you that. Mm -hmm. But the words that he said were said. And that's one thing I mentioned last time is we've got to be careful about our words and how we say them. We can hurt feelings or like the proverb says, life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that we say has power. It has importance. Um, Maybe you've experienced this. I don't know how many times people have mentioned to me, you know, I want to tell you something. You know, 15 years ago, you stopped me in the hall and you said this and it changed my life. Have, have you ever had that happen? Oh, yeah. And we just, it was just, I was headed to get coffee on the way back, you know? Yeah. We didn't understand that it was something that we said. So many times it's that way. Our, our words are powerful. Yes. Isaac has already blessed Jacob, but here he gives him the confirmation to continue because in Jacob's mind, it could have been Esau's mad at me. My father's mad at me. Maybe I don't deserve this. Mm -hmm. So Isaac gives him the blessing of Abraham, he, which is passed along. And we followed this all the way from Adam that there is a people of God. I had the chart. The lineage, right, shows the people of God through that. Now, under the New Covenant, anybody can come. Right. In the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, only the people that considered themselves part of Israel or the Jewish nation mm -hmm. were the people of God. Yes. Outside that, they were not the people of God, and they had no, no uh, hope of redemption. Right. 
So here are the people of God and who the blessings flow through. Right. And it is a symbol of the church, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. <clears throat> of coming in. Um, he tells him to go to his... Um, hey, Lori. Cracks me up when you do that. I have to say hey to everybody. Okay. okay. Sorry. Um, he gives him the blessings of God <clears throat> and tells him uh, that the blessing of Abraham will go to you and your seed, verse 4. And Isaac sent Jacob away, and then we read about Esau. Now, um, that part's significant because it is the confirmation that it's really real. Um, we need that in our lives. I, I have had countless people that, had a moment of uh, that they consider when they were born again and years down the road say, I, I need to talk to you about this. I just don't know that I'm saved. Mm. Right? right? And we need that confirmation. And yes. God will give it to us. Yes. And in the book of 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, John tells us, by this do you know that you're the children of God. And he gives all these reasons. Right. Right? Right. By this. And the devil will come in and try to make you think that you're not a child of God. What, didn't you sin? Didn't you sin today? Well, I guess you're not a child of God, right? And he will tell us, well, you've, you've messed up your, your life beyond, mm -hmm. but God, God will give you the confirmation and the hope to hold on to. Mm -hmm. That even though, I mean, he had really done wrong. Right. What had Esau done wrong? Esau was just thought he was going to get the the um, the blessing because of being the firstborn in it, but for his sin was pride, right? Right. Right. And Jacob's, he was not um, not a good man. Right. He was not. If any of them, any of either of the ones needed redeeming, it was Jacob because he was a a subplatter, a deceiver. Yes. And he needed his life changed. And and maybe there's a Maybe there's a um, key in that is, you know, we need our lives changed and we're willing to have them changed. That's right. Every, every one of the folks in the Word of God, that their story is told. They all needed Jesus. They all needed God. Right. They were all mess-ups. They messed up everything. That's right. So we're in good company. We sure are. And nobody's... nobody's uh, you know, even close to perfect. That's right. The only one that was was that was close to perfect was Job. Right. And Job still had to face an onslaught of tragedy. Mm -hmm. But he held on to God. Amen. Held on. So, six, verse 6, if you'd read 6 through 9. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Paddan Aram to take him away from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and mother and was gone to Paddan Aram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, and the sister of Nabajoth to be his wife. Good job on those names, by Thank the way. You. So I I found this sec this section of scripture from six through nine very enlightening. Yes, it is. And what is enlightening to you about it? Before I obstinate, headstrong boy, determined to defy his parents, to go against the thing that he knew meant so much to them. Yeah. On purpose. Yeah. You ever had a kid just try to hurt you on purpose? And it comes back to bottom. Yes, it does. So that that's the thing I saw is mm -hmm. this other son said, Oh, you're blessing him. Oh, you don't like the people of Canaanite. Oh, you don't think Canaanite women would be good? I bet I can find one that I like. 
and it is very telltale of mm. someone who's in rebellion mm. because if I say left, they're going to go right. If I say, you know, stand up, they're going to sit down. And, and who does he go to but the other brother, the, Ishmael? Yes, the other brother. The other family member that had mocked yeah. his father, that's the one he goes to. Oh, oh, oh. I know Oh my word! I know. It is. It Y'all is so excuse telling. us while I have a moment. Oh, so you're going to do this? Well, I'll just go to somebody else in the family. That, somebody that you don't. Somebody like. that will have give me yes. their approval, right? So here is Esau, who turns out to to be the father of the Edomites. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the Edomites, but they were the enemy of Israel. They were the the offspring of Esau, the Esau is also called Edom, the Edomites, and this this tribe, if you will, uh, were the enemy of Israel, just like um, when Jacob and Esau were, you know, he he grabbed his heel coming out, and then the blessing was for Jacob that his seed would rule over and that Esau would serve. You know, when you read something like this and you recognize that there is nothing new under the sun. That's right. The it devil, makes... The devil has no new new plans. He doesn't. It's all, it's all, you know, nothing is new under the sun according to Solomon. Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, if this is something that has occurred in your life, you are right up there with one of the fathers of Israel. That's I right. mean, you are right there with them. So that should give you encouragement. That's right. And what could Isaac oh, have said? Man. Well, I guess I should have blessed Esau after all. Yes. I guess I should have just given in. It's all my fault if I'd have been a better father. If and I'd then have... Esau and Jacob wouldn't be fighting. Yes. They'd meet on division in the family. Yes. If and I'd have just folded because my child was mad at me, if yeah. I'd have just given in and given them what they wanted. And what difference does it make really anyway? Yeah. Oh, my after, word. And I've heard people do this, you know, well, uh, Mr. Bob, aren't you going to fix your will? You make it, make sure that your will is known when you're gone. What's going to happen to your money? What's going to happen to your estate? I'll be gone. I won't worry about it then. That's right. They can let them all fight over it. I, I'll be gone. Lori told me to straighten up and not put my dirty laundry online. Lori, <laughs> I got no secrets. It's in every family, in it's every in church, and every it's every group because that's the way of the enemy is to be rebellious and uh, and that's why and i and i've said this before in society today in america people will go with what is completely unrighteous and rebellious oh the christians say this i'm doing this that's right oh i'm against those ten commandments i often want to ask them which ones of those ten commandments are you against yeah yeah. The, the adultery part, the murder part, the stealing part. Which ones are you against? Yeah. Why yeah. are you against them? I, you know, when you go against the will of God, why? Are, why? What is it? What is it you want to do, or what is it that you think is right and um, binding and and restrictive to your life that you won't follow God? Exactly. And and so here Esau could have said. This is, it, I will repent at this point and I will follow God's path, right? Mm -hmm. I will go with, you know, this is the ones that please my father. I want to please my father. It is very possible that he could have get, given him or he would have received better blessing. That's right. I mean, children, obey your parents. Verse 7, and Jacob obeyed his father and mother. That's what Letitia just said. She said, although Jacob was deceitful, he was obedient to his mother. Yes. Jacob was obedient to his parents. Right. Mm -hmm. And here he obeys his father. Yes. And if his father had said something differently, I think Jacob was confused and shook up enough with mm -hmm. his brother's actions. I think Jacob would have been obedient to his father. And that has a lot to do with the will of God is... Uh, getting rid of pride. Pride is against God. Obedience 
is for God. That's right. Right? That's right. What encouragement we find in the Word of God, don't we? Woo. Now, this chapter could be overlooked. I'm trying to go through and hit the high points of the Bible, and I've told you this before. There's so many things I think are necessary for every Christian to know in their Bibles. This... Uh, it is hard to leave one out, though, yes. because there's such truth, and there's nothing in there by accident. Right. That's why it's so important to read the entire Word of God. Battery is low. Tell it you don't care. I don't care. Um, this next section is what I'm talking about, is I think this is this is important Bible, and... Um, so we, we've seen that Esau's going to go unto Ishmael and took the, take of the wives he had. And he's, they're Ishmaelites, and they're Arabs, if you will, and they're going to be against Israel, and they are to this day. Yes. Right? And, yes. Um, if you would read 10 through uh, 15. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached into heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Just as Abraham, Jacob's grandfather, was given a covenant with God, Jacob is given this. Uh, his father has just given him the assurity of his blessing. Now God himself gives him the, the covenant. God at this point does not say, if you will be obedient, if you will walk with me, if whatever. He does not give him an if in this covenant. He says, I will. Um, this part has always intrigued me. It really the, has the, the, the ladder and, and I don't say stairway to heaven because it reminds me of that song, the ladder, the ladder to heaven. Yeah. It, it just intrigues me because like you just said, there's no if. He just automatically inherits this covenant and God is showing him, but I don't know. Well, I did a little research on it and my conclusion is that there is not a place in the planet where God comes and goes from heaven and all the angels come out. That, that Not would a be, portal. Right. Like a wormhole <laughs> in time or something. Right. Yes. That, there's not one. Right. But it happened where Jacob was. It happened where he was ready to hear from God and needed to hear from God. Right. It was a place where he was in confusion. A place where he was wandering a place where Probably he was afraid. In, in trouble afraid yeah. um in doubt about his future even though, i mean if your father tells you gives you that and on the way out the door you look over at your brother and he goes oh wow you yeah. know what i mean yeah we don't know what he what was said between them we don't That's know true. even though your father he's going to die soon yeah your mother's old who's going to protect you against your brother yeah and he's a big guy because he's a hunter. Yes, right? yes. He's hairy, too. He's a hairy hunter. <laughs> he's, he's blue toe. <laughs> <laughs> right? So. Yes. See what I mean? Yes, I do. And, and you got to eat your spinach. That's right, right, Popeye. So, 
I think that this was this happened at this place because of him, not because of a significant geographic location. Right. 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 Now this this location did have significance later, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But this this place happened not because of a geographic location, but because of a spiritual place with Jacob. Mm -hmm. It was at a place where he probably went to sleep with all this on his mind mm -hmm. because it says he dreamed and a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. Now, there's never been another dream like that in the Bible. There's never been another person that came to this place, laid their head on this rock, had that same dream. That we, that's the, it was for Jacob. And uh, Kathy j just wrote, there's a lot there starting from the rock for pillows, hardness on his head, discomfort, and then the heavenly plan revealed. Yes. That's good. Right. A good, I good love point. that. And also it was natural rocks, not something hewn out because we know in the, uh, the temple, God said not to make the altar out of hewn stone. Right, right. It was not to be man-made. It was to be something he made. You never think about the rocks that you go out in your yard or go out in the woods and you pick up a rock. You never think about those being God made, but they are. Right. God formed them. That's right. And yes. they're varied in shape. Wow. But the, <coughs> this situation was one for Jacob in this location. And this location has some significance. Did you remember that Abraham came here and on his way to Egypt and on his way back and didn't build, built an altar. Did you remember that? No, I didn't. We're not. going to get to that in just a second. Here God says, Thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Sounds a lot like Jacob mm -hmm. or Abraham, doesn't it? That's right. Um, in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. It's the same covenant. It's the mm -hmm. Abrahamic covenant that he has. It's passing down. Now, Think about all the people in history between Abraham and now. Were, were there people that made mistakes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Were there people that did godly things and righteousness? Yes. That group of people, including people like Solomon, uh, Samson, people we don't think about as very godly, are listed in God's number. They are, mm -hmm. right? Right. We are. Right. As many mistakes as we make, as many times as we have to say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Father, mm -hmm. forgive me. 70 times 7, right? That's right. We're supposed to forgive one another. He forgives us. That's right. So we have to keep pressing on and do better and grow in that, correct? Yes. Um, this, this place, actually, is, uh, in one of our other studies, it's, it's going to show up. So... If you'll read 16 through 19. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. So here we discover this is where Bethel uh, originates the name Bethel because he named it that. I went back to uh, Genesis 12 and 13, and Abraham, it says, passed through Bethel and made an altar there. That's right. And then he came back and stopped at Bethel. It is along a ridge of mountains that go right down the center of Israel. It is actually about the center of Israel geographically um, and connecting with our story that we're doing on Sunday with the book of Joshua, it is about five miles from Ai. Really? Yep, it's, it's very close to stone's throw from wow. Ai. Ai is one we studied. If you followed us on Sunday, the, um, the battle at Ai where Achan sinned and that's that was such a good five miles sermon. from yeah from uh, Bethel. So this city has significance. Um, wow, that's good. So Jacob stopped at this place when his life 
was in shambles, so to speak. Mm -hmm. He didn't know what was in the future for him. Um, if you think about you should get a wife among this people, that's hard to do. That's hard to have a surety that you can go in and, you know, and I mean, you can't just pick a woman. You right. can't just, it has to be the person that God's called for you. That's why the, the servant, when he went out to find Rebecca, yes. he was so unsure and so he was so um, nervous about finding the right woman for, mm -hmm. for Isaac. Mm -hmm. That's right. So here, here's a man that goes out and he just, he's not quite sure if he has this blessing or not. His father spoke it. His mother patted him on the head and sent him away, and his brother is leering at him as he goes, and he leaves this place where he's grown up, his hometown, his, just like Isaac did. Right. Got comments? I don't know what that was. No, no more since Kathy. Okay. Um, he calls it Bethel, which means house of God. The stone that he took, he made into an altar. Um, poured oil on it and he says how dreadful is is this place it's the gate of heaven it's the house of God <clears throat> as I said a few minutes ago I think that it was not a geographical wormhole or what was that you called it portal portal into the spiritual matters elsewise everybody through time would have gone through there yeah and and that would have been our Mecca right that right. would have been our place um, the most mentioned city in the Bible is Jerusalem, and the second most mentioned city is Bethel. Wow. Yes, but Bethel is not mentioned in the New Testament. Interesting. So Bethel was a, maybe a precursor, that's not a good word, a forerunner mm -hmm. of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Not in the same location, it was north of Jerusalem. But I think it was sort of a John the Baptist right. for, for Jerusalem, right. a an opening act. Yes, does that sound make sense to people? I understand what you're saying. I hope they do. I hope it's. I think Bethel was. Does that make sense? I think Bethel was a place. Well, I, you know, you think of these places where they built altars and all of those things, places we will never go, never see. Right. The point is we carry Bethel in our heart. We carry it with us because it's the place where God pours out his blessing. That's right. The place of anointing even. So that goes with us. That's the New Testament. Mm -hmm. We don't have to stop at a physical location to receive the blessing of God. That's right. And like uh, Moses went to Mount Sinai mm -hmm. to a burning bush, he went back to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments once the children of Israel had come out of Egypt. It was a location. But we all have a burning bush location in our life. So. A think moment so. where we hear the voice of God calling us spiritually, not audibly. And right. We can return to that place yeah, in and our I think spirit. That's, to me, that's the, it's a catalyst in our lives to get us kicked off in the right place. Yes. It's something to that God will bring back to remembrance. Yes. A moment in time. A moment in our life that we that we can go back to. God has yes. God has reminded me of things so many times that I had forgotten and I will start feeling down or need hope or whatever. And God say, Didn't I tell you? Do you remember this place? I had forgotten yeah, about Yeah, and I have I have in my memories places where I was at the moment where the Lord convicted me yes. or the Lord encouraged me. I, I remember at this moment, I have it coming in my mind, where I was kneeling beside a bed and I see, I see the bedspread. I know the carpet. I know the room I was in. I know what time of day it was because the window, the sun was beating in on me. That is a Bethel for me. Mm -hmm. And it will always be in my spirit. I don't even know if that house still exists anymore, but in my spirit, that place was a Bethel. That's right. I can go to the physical location on a piece of property right now where I was saved, but I but the building's gone. It was a little shed that my dad had turned into a laundry room. Oh, but God. it's always here. It's here. Right. That's right. And um, I remember Bob Harrington 
the chaplain of Bourbon Street, if you have ever listened to his testimony, I grew up listening to this LP album, and he was funny as he told his testimony, and we listened to it over and over again, and um, he he was uh, he was a bad uh, guy, an alcoholic, and his wife was about to leave him, and he went to his church service, and he got saved, and when he was leaving, uh, he stopped by got stopped by a police officer for speeding, and the police officer was, you know, where you where are you going in such a hurry? And, he began to tell this man, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention, but you, you don't understand. My life has been a mess. And he, t he basically told the police officer what had changed in him. His testimony. Right. He gave him right there. And the police officer said, well, that sounds like something I need to happen to me. And Bob Harrington said, well, I'll tell you how to get it. If you go down to that Sweetwater Baptist Church and sit on the seventh pew, on the end, he said, you'll get it. And you know, wow. that was a simplistic thing. And that's the way we think. We think this is the condition I was saved in. Right. This is the condition where I felt God. And we felt like, well, you've got to do that too. Yeah. Right? Well, you and, and folks, people are saved in all walks of life in every, I mean, you could be at work on your on your coffee break. You could be in the middle of doing some report for your boss. You could be in some time constraint. You could That's be right. at a hospital in the middle of the night in the waiting room. Uh, you could be in the middle of a sound sleep and wake up and God speak to you. you all out hours of the night, all days of the year, all places on earth, God will speak to you. Amen. Amen. Right? So I don't want us to get bogged down on Bethel, but what is Bethel for us? Amen. Right? What's Bethel for us, and where will we find our Jacob's Ladder? That's right. Right? Whew. That is so We, we sang Jacob's Ladder. Uh, well, actually, it's one of our songs in rotation. We need to sing it again, but that's, <laughs> that's such a great song. And um, when you think about, and, and I, I wanted this chapter to be in because I think all Christians need to know certain things in the Bible. This chapter talks about Jacob's Ladder, and that term is in secular society. That's true. Right? That's Everybody, true. whether they, they don't know why. They don't know why, but in in the English language, Jacob's Ladder is like part of vocabulary. So I want you to understand where the, where the term comes from if you were not aware of it. <laughs> Kathy said, <clears throat> oh, Angie, I can so relate to those precious moments. Some were where I thought the darkest times. Some were times of praising with such gratitude. <laughs> but I can feel them still. I love this connection to Bethel. Me too, Kathy. I feel like I've just had another another <coughs> glorious revelation come because of what you've just taught, Paul. Wow. That's really amazing. Wow. Now I want to study all about Bethel. Hey, Tina. Glad to have you with us, sweetheart. We're in Genesis 28. Now, one other thing about Bethel. It originally was called Luz. I looked that up. Luz means almond tree. So it was probably a place where an almond tree or an almond grove was. That was It was named um, like we would say canyon or grove or oak grove. I, I have an oak grove site I go to. Obviously it was named after an oak grove. Here was a place that was known by what you could see and it became a place known by what you couldn't see. No, 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 no. I'm thinking, isn't in the in the Ark of the Covenant, wasn't Aaron's rod an, an almond, almond that down. sprouted? Yeah. What if it was from that tree? Oh. <laughs> I just oh. saw the hair on the back of your neck stand up like a dog. More to study. <laughs> More to study. Oh, my. Well, it, it, the almond is significant in Israel, right? So oh here, my. so here is Bethel. It's a, and I want, I wanted to bring that out because God changes names. He changes names of people. Saul to Paul. Yes. Jacob is going to have his name the changed. Leave the old behind and step into the new. Exactly. <sighs> Abram was changed to Abraham. This is a night of revelation. It really is. And I didn't think it was going to be much to the study. That always happens. That always happens. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. 
Kenzie said, Johnny heard God's voice so clearly on the highway on his way to work one time. He burst into work telling everybody and the other mechanics were ready to put him in a straight jacket. <laughs> Praise God for that zeal for the Lord. Um, Cheryl said, I thought I was saved, but I needed to let go of some things. So February 18, 2000, I came to my Bethel and the Lord made his mercy and cleansing 100% clear to me. Mm. Amen. Praise God. I, I'm telling you, Lori, she said, there's always so much to these studies, Paul. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. such good stuff. I know. Isn't a study great when you have people that, you yeah. know, that interact about the same scripture? It's yeah. always better than, I mean, we can get a lot out of a personal study. And I'll, in our last section tonight, verses 20 through 22, if you would read those. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give a tenth unto thee. Now, some of my studies in this passage, some of the commentaries did not view this in favor of Jacob, that it was more of a, in fact, one man even said, he said it was like Jacob was saying, okay, God, I'm going to make a deal with you. I don't think I don't read that. Yeah. I re, what I read here is a man who is desperate to know God, and what he asks of God is not unreasonable. Right. It is, in fact, what Jesus said we could pray for when he taught the disciples how to pray. Right. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Right? Oh, well, oh, here we go. Hang on, I gotta write this down. Now, so he says he vowed a vow saying. If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, there's this first thing. God go with him and keep him in the way. That's not unreasonable. That's not something that God would not be pleased with doing for us. But Jacob offered back to God something. God just simply stated, I will give you the blessing that I promised Abraham and his descendants. I will give it to you, Jacob. I will be with you. Um... Oh. Hey, Courtney, good to have you, sweetie. And your all families of the, the earth will be blessed because of your seed. And he gives him all these great promises. And Jacob comes back with, if you, if you will keep me in this way and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Now, that's not unreasonable to ask. That's right. He didn't say a steak dinner every night. He didn't say um, a gold apparel. Right, or a Cadillac. Yes. He didn't say those things. He said clothes to put on and bread to eat, right? Right. So that's reasonable. That also leads us to believe that Jacob began to wonder where his next meal was going to come from. Right. Right? Yes. His his mother had made all his clothes. His, his brother brought in the meat. And they probably sent him with some provision. Some. But he didn't know what he was about to go to. He was not a hunter. No, and he was going to go take a wife, so he would then be responsible for a wife and family. That's right. With nothing. With nothing. He had... Because he, he had left his father's home for the time. I mean, yes. eventually he would inherit, right? I eventually. have to tell you, and, I, and all of you have probably been through this, when you move out from under mom and dad, it's a scary thing. Yes. All through high school, you're looking forward to the day when you become a man, become a woman, have your own family, my own place. When I get my place, it's going to be like this. Did you say become a woman? What, become a woman? Become a man? <laughs> become a woman. It sounded like you said become a Mormon. Become a, We're a not man Mormon. or a woman. Or however, you, however you thought about it in high school, there was a day you dreamed of and then you stepped out that door. Yes. You took that trip to that college or that new town or the or university. Or you got married. Or and, or whatever, yeah. and you stepped out, and it's a scary thing. Yeah. And in that first month when you get the bills. Yep. So Jacob mm -hmm. was about to go through all that. Mm -hmm. He knew that. So he had this, all this that he goes through with God, and he said, 
verse 21, so that I come again to my Father's house in peace. I want this all to be behind me. I want the, the problem between Esau and I to be fixed. I want us to not be at war. I don't want to have to be looking over my shoulder the rest of my days. Right. right. right? God, that's what I want. I won't want I don't want a lot. I'm asking for simple things. Yes. And asking for things that in if we look at it from the outside in, it's things God would be pleased with yes. us asking him. Yes. There's so many things that, that people ask God for that are not really needed. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, they're they're to glorify ourselves. Uh, to feed they're, our flesh. they're the things yeah. we want, not the things we need. Yes. And when we simply ask God for the things we we need, mm -hmm. and we're happy with the things that we get, yes. then He's He is pleased with us to bless us further. Yes. When Solomon was set, when He asked Solomon, "What? Okay, you're the king. What would what do you want?" And Solomon said, I, I just want wisdom to rule the people of Israel. You know, there's a problem, though, because we've all gotten to be such smarty pants nowadays. What do you mean? I mean, like, people saying, oh, Father, just give me wisdom, knowing that God gave him everything else. <laughs> Manipulative prayers. Hmm. I've heard them. And I'm sure I've said them before. We, you know, we're too blessed sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I do. I never thought about it like that. Mm-hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Folks who know enough of the word to be dangerous with it and, and trying to manipulate God. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's. We've got to be honest. We've got to be aware and honest. God knows our hearts, too. He yes, knows if he it's does. real humility or if it's mani manipulative. That's right. I'm sorry. I just <clears throat> had to throw that in there. No, it, it, that's actually good. Um, verse 22, And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and all that thou shalt give me will I surely give the tenth unto thee. So he promises God a tithe for the rest of his life. That's a that's a pretty big promise. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big promise to give God a tenth of everything for the rest of my life. It shows that he wanted to serve God and that he wanted to do something for God. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, isn't that the heart that we have when someone shares love with us? What can we do for them? Right. right. If someone brings you a present at Christmas time that was not on your list, you're immediately going to be thinking about what you could give them. Oh, I am. You know? I am. I'm like, you got to keep some extra gifts just in case because you don't want to miss anybody. Right. You don't want to miss anybody. And, and God blesses us. Mm -hmm. What can I do for you, Lord? Yes. That, that is the true, the true heart of someone. Right. To return love. Right. Love is returned when it's received like that. Yes. Yes. In, in the New Testament, we read it is your kindness that leads us to repentance. Yes. God's kindness led us to repentance, not his justice or his anger, but his kindness. There's such a fine balance there, though, because so much of God's righteousness is, and his, oh, I know I'm going to get it for this, his requirement for righteousness has been thrown out. You know what I'm saying? I do. I know where there's you're going. justice and judgment, and that it's important. And then there's mercy and grace, and and you don't, you can't get off balance with it. It's too off balance now. Everybody's preaching and and yelling, grace and mercy, grace and mercy, grace and mercy, which it is, but there's still got to be obedience and righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm not and justice and I'm not sure I'm not sure help me because I'm not sure why that's so hard for folks to understand well we want our flesh wants the easy path well, of course but even anybody with any sense in their head knows that it can't always be easy no and it, <coughs> it it's a toggle over to like I, I've been preaching on Joshua, it's a toggle over in your mind of 
the maturity level of obedience to God, of a serving soldier, serving, a servant at heart. That's what it toggles over to. And you, your mind, and you can see it in a child when they grow up. You can see a child go from, they, they react to something instead of being proactive, or they react instead of uh, living the right way. They have to, they have to be um, disciplined into something, or they only do it. They're only obedient when mom and dad's watching, or when the police officer's right. got his radar gun out. Right. 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 Um, there's a there's a level of maturity that people go over into, and the people of Israel did it when they crossed into the wilderness and then they when they went to the Jordan there's a level that people had reached they had thrown out all their childishness when I was a child I spake as a child and I thought as a child but when I became a man I threw away childish things yes there's a level where people do that and they they reach a level of I love God I really love him and I will do anything so really it is a uh an evidence of your maturity level. I think so. Of whether or not you recognize that you you need some trials and it's okay to have some trials in your life because it forms you into Christ. Right. I think that when that all of us when we're well not forms you into Christ but makes you more the, the Christ like. Image of Christ, yes. yeah. I, I think that all of us when we're immature Christians have an immature attitude about things. I think that statement of Paul's was not just about things of the flesh, but it was about things of the spirit too. Mm -hmm. We don't pray like we should. We don't read our Bibles like we should. We don't witness like we should. We aren't obedient and listening to God like we should. We crank up every noise. We get every, every little uh, toy in the world and there's some part of your life as a Christian where you realize that is not um, something that brings you joy. Right. It's unfulfilling to live like that. And you're really no different than living like the world. And then there's a place where a Christian that's growing will move over into, um, I just want to serve you. Yes. I don't care about the house. I don't care yes. about my job. I don't care if people leave me. I, I just want to serve you. Yes. And that is, I think that, that it's in, um, even in something, a microcosm in a marriage, because a husband and wife that get married very often get married based on physical attraction. Right. Well, he had never seen her with a stomach virus, you know? Yeah. She's never seen him when he first gets up and has morning breath. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. They've not seen each other like that. Right. Uh, they've not had their first, all they've had is dates and all they've had is sweetness and all they've had is candy and cards and flowers. And um, he buy, she buys him a new tie and he buys her, um, you know, something, some present. And you know what I mean? It's all yeah. the romance, romance stuff. And when you get married, it's not that way. When That's you get right. married, there is a, hopefully there's still romance, but there is a different level of, of relationship where if that husband grows to love the wife, truly love her, he wants to serve. His life is about what can I do for you? That's How right. can I help you? That's right. When I wake up in the morning, you're on my mind. Now, he thought it was before. Mm -hmm. Before they were married, he thought, all he thought about was her, but it was not the, the spiritual. The sacrifices. The sacrifices. Uh, it yeah. was all really what's in it for me. It's emotion. Right. It's emotion and, yeah. Right. And she's the most beautiful yes. woman I ever saw. And I will, I will draw attention when I walk in a room with her on my arm. People will all look to me and they say, who is this man that can attract a woman like that? Yeah. It's ego. Yeah. And when, when that marriage goes on, it either grows together or it grows apart. Right. That's and, so good. And our relationship with God is that way. Yeah. You're, you're off camera. You're going to have to come in closer. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Kathy said, tithing doesn't always have to mean money. We all have a way to give. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Courtney said, yes, that's so true. I used to have a hard time receiving for others. I felt unworthy. I thank God I've come to understand God works through his children. Um, Tina agrees. Kathy said, what you two give to us right here is priceless to me. It helps me on my walk with the Lord so much. We love you. Yeah. Um, the worst times in my life taught me the most and to seek him first. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought about carrots. You thought about carrots? I thought about carrots. You mean like in diamonds? No, like in carrots that you eat. Bugs Bunny carrots. Okay. Because it's been on my mind lately because I want to get a new bed ready for this fall to plant carrots. And and the thing is, the, here's the thing about carrots. If you've never grown them, let me give you a little hint. Carrots need soft soil in order to penetrate nice, straight carrot roots. But that's not all there is to it. Because if you if you have rocks and stuff in that soil, a carrot root will go down and it'll bend. It'll shape itself around. And, and if it's really blocked by hard pan soil, it will just be stubby. It won't grow that nice long root. But if that soil is too fertile, it won't just grow a carrot. It will grow all these little nubs, all these little side nubs off the main carrot. So when you pull that carrot, you've got this. Like roots more than yeah, just a single uh, tree. Yeah, it's like a very bizarre looking thing. And I've done that before. Had too fertile a soil for that carrot to grow in. So it's got to have that perfect strength of the soil, but not too easy not too fertile okay now think about that with what we're talking about because if everything is smooth sailing all the time we've got too many branches it's like the fig tree the roots mm -hmm. of the fig tree mm -hmm. but the lord knows how much obstacle we can handle. Yes. And if we are facing an obstacle in our life that seems impossible to get around, the Lord has allowed that to be in our life to make us toughen us up, toughen us up, mm -hmm. become more Christ-like. He's saying to us, okay, here's you a chance to grow. I'm not putting this here to punish you. I'm not letting this happen to torture you. I'm putting this here to help you grow. And anybody that does exercising, which I don't really do, <laughs> but you can conquer like those little, the bar thing that you hold on to and you pull yourself up. I don't know what that's called. Chin up bar. Chin up bar. Well, you know, once you get really good at it, you have to do something else to be harder. Put, put the lead boots on or something. Yeah. Like to or if you're lifting weights, you may you, you may doing. finally conquer the fifty pound weights, but what do you do? You put the seventy five pound weight on there. We could put a donut on there and bring it up and take a bite. bite. It's supposed to get harder. It's supposed to. It's supposed to, yeah. No, it's supposed to. It's supposed to, okay. <laughs> it's supposed to get harder. That strengthens us. But we should not, we shouldn't get angry at God for putting those things into our life or taking away some of that fertility in the soil that makes it so easy. We should be thankful. We should always be recognizing that God's plan is perfect. And if it's getting hard, that's because you're getting stronger. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, First Peter four twelve, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Amen. See, the word of God is right yes, and true. Is. That's right. 
So jo Jacob was through this time of testing and through a time of growth, a time when he had to leave mom and dad, a time when he had enemy. Yes. He had probably never had an enemy. Yes, because he was protected. He was, and now he's got an enemy in his own family. As close as his brother. And when he did this, he was, now you're blessed, right? And that sounds backwards if you're outside the church, if you've not read scripture, if you don't have a broad understanding of life, that sounds backwards. But God says, now you're blessed. What we say, I'm blessed when we have money in the bank, food in the pantry, you know, my car is paid for, I am so blessed. But what does the Bible say blessed is? Count it all joy. When you fall into when you diverse, diverse temptations, temptations, right? Count it all joy. Now you're blessed. Yes. When people are speaking vile against you, right. for the Lord's sake. That's right. Now you're yes. blessed. Jacob yes. was blessed and he was about to be really, 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 really tested. Yes, he was. He was going to get two wives. Next week. Two for the price of well, actually, it wasn't for the price of yeah, one. He, he had worked to pay for, both, for of both of them. But a deceiving uncle is what we're going to look at next week in Genesis chapter 29. Another yeah. love story or two. Well, I don't know if the one was a love story, but it happened. Uh, Kathy said, I was wondering why I had freaky carrots. We need the ups and downs in order to accept the blessings and be appreciative of it. Yes, Tina. Yeah, I do more. <laughs> Today, I did a lot of lifting babies, got my exercise. And I just lost that phone to the charge. That's right. That shows it's time. It's to, time. To stop. And I didn't think we could go. I probably thought a half an hour maybe on this chapter. This was really a good chapter. I'm glad. I enjoyed it. And there goes the ding dong and the cuckoo in the bedroom just went off too. We love y'all. Thank you for joining us all. Tomorrow, I have to get out and pick blueberries early in the morning. Yep. I have to go to bed early tonight so I can get up before the heat. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good night, everybody. We love y'all. <laughs>